here we're going to talk about conversion between the two systems. That is, we're going to go from metric to English or English to metric, uh, but uh, we have to use math. There's no way to do this without using math. This, was the, this will be the basic instructions for how to do these problems. We would not talk about temperature problems in this case. That would be done separately. Keep in mind that this is made for Anatomy 10A Lab for Mount San Antonio College in Walnut, California. Let's review. What's the difference between metric versus English? Well, remember, metric system is used by most people in the world, whereas English system is pretty much used here in the United States and also England. That's why we call it English. The difference is, uh, in the metric system, we have meters for length, liters for volume, and grams for mass. But in English, we have all sorts of descriptions for meter, such as inch, foot, and miles. For volume, we have cup, pint, quart, or gallon. And then for mass, we have ounce and pound. In the metric system, it's easy to convert, but in the English system, it's harder to convert because these relationships are not always the same. On this side, the metric system, the units are always different by a power of 10. That is, it's either 10 or 100 or 1,000 times greater or less. Remember, a conversion is changing from one unit to another. So what is a unit? Well, a unit tells you the amount of something that you have. Before we move further, let's review our uh, math rules. When we do math, remember, you can always multiply anything by 1 and not change anything. Okay, so you multiply 10 by 1, it's due 10. You multiply 99 by 1, it's due 99. Haven't changed anything. Interestingly, though, 1 is not always the number 1. 1 can be expressed as a ratio. That is, some number on top, and if it's the same number on the bottom, then is that still 1? In other words, if you have the number 3 on top, and 3 on the bottom, that's still 1, okay? Or, if you have an equation, that is something on this side, let's say uh, 2 plus 3 is equal to 5, if you have on one side of the equation on top, so if you have 2 plus 3 on top, and you have 5 on the bottom, okay, you have one side of the equation, one side of the equal sign on top, and the other side of the equal sign on the bottom, it's still the same thing. That, that is, you can say 2 plus 3 over 5, or 5 over 2 plus 3, doesn't matter what's on top, what's on the bottom, as long as one's on top, one's on the bottom. And uh, guess what? This will equal to 5 over 5, which is equal to 1. Okay? So as long as you have one side of the equation on top, the other side of the equation on the bottom, you can flip-flop them, but they have to be on top of each other, it will equal to 1. And if you multiply by any of these ratio, you have not changed anything. It's still the same number. So, before we go further, you should know that there are some very important equations that we will give you on the test, okay? Do not memorize. All of these will be given to you, okay? What I need you to know is how to use it on the test. We will talk about temperature change in a different presentation, but for now, let's focus on these relationships. Step one, what do you do? Well, you start with what you have been given. So let's say, here's a sample problem. 8.8 .8 pounds is equal to how many kilograms? Well, step one, start with what you've been given. So let's start with 8.8 .8 pounds. Step two, you've got to find the right equations to help you. What is the right equation? Remember, this is 8.8 .8 pounds is equal to how many kilograms? Well, the right equation has to have the unit you've been given. 
So you, sure enough, here's the unit you've been given. And it has to have the unit that you want. Sure enough, here it is. This is the unit that you want. So this is the correct equation that you want to use, okay? Step three. Multiply what you have been given by the ratio one. So what you've been given is 8.8 .8 pounds. Remember, that's understood to be over one. We're gonna multiply this by the ratio one. Now remember, the, this ratio comes from the relationship of 2.2 pounds is equal to 1 kg. What should be on top, what should be in the bottom? Well, because pounds is on top here, you want pounds on the bottom so that you can cancel them out. Well, what else goes with pound? In this relationship is 2.2 pounds. So, 2.2 pounds is on the bottom. What's on top? 1 kg has to be on top. 1 kg. So, you take 8.8 .8 times by 1. Divided by 2.2. And the answer now is going to be in kg. So, the answer is 4 kilogram, okay? And sure enough, that's what we did. We'll multiply across the top and then divide across the bottom and the answer is 4 kg. I hope that makes sense. Let's do some practice problem. So go ahead and pause this video while you figure out the answers and then come back when you're done. Here are the answers to the problems that we just did. If you have these answers correctly done, then you don't have to go any further. If you did not do them correctly, then you should continue listening to the explanation. Okay, so first problem is 10 kilograms equal to how many pounds? To do this problem, we have to remember the relationship of 2.2 pounds is equal to 1 kg. Start with what you have, which is 10 kg. That's understood to be over 1. Multiply it by the ratio of 1. Okay, now the ratio of 1 has to be written as a ratio of something over something. Well, what's on the bottom? Kg has to be in the bottom. Why? Because Kg here is on top, and you want to cancel that Kg with this Kg. So this has to be on the bottom. That's 1 Kg. What's on top? 2.2 pounds. And now you multiply across the top. So it's 10 times 2.2 pounds divided by 1, and therefore the answer is 22 pounds. Let's go back to see if that's the answer. The answer is 22 pounds. Okay, the next problem is we start with inches. Now remember, you're going to have to you know we're going to give you this relationship. One inch is equal to 2.54 centimeter, and one meter is equal to 39.37 inches. Okay, so we're going to give you one. We're going to give you these relationships. You just have to know how to use them. One inch equal to 2.54 centimeter. One inch is equal to 2.54 centimeter. So for this first part here, I'm going to start with what we have, which is 100 inches. That's understood to be over 1. And then we're going to multiply by a ratio of 1. 
that ratio of 1 has to have inches on the bottom so that you can cancel each other out. Inch on the bottom. So this will have to be in the bottom. And therefore, you cancel that inch with this inch. What's on top? This has to be on the top. So it's 2.54 centimeter on top. 100 times 2.54 divided by 1. And now the answer is 254 centimeter. Okay. Now we're going to have to go from centimeter to meter. Well, I hope you remember the relationship here is 254 centimeter. The relation between here and here is there are 100 centimeter to 1 meter. Okay? So 254 254 centimeter over 1 multiply by a ratio of 1 but what's on the bottom centimeter has to be in the bottom so we can cancel out so 100 centimeter on the bottom and 1 meters on top and if you do the math this is now Uh, this is going to be 2.54 meter, okay, 2.54 meter, just put this into your calculator, and I want you to convert that to kilometer, well, the relation between meter and kilometer is 1,000 meter is equal to 1 kilometer. So we have 2.54 meter over 1, multiply it by a ratio of 1, okay, now this ratio, what's on the bottom? Well, meter will have to be in the bottom because we have a meter here, we want to cancel that out. So, a thousand meters on the bottom, what's on top? Kilometer will have to be on top. So we're going to put that over here, 1 km, and now you're going to have 2.54 divided by 1,000, and now the answer is 0 0.00254 km. Okay. And I hope that's the answer. Okay, so let's go back. Two zero. Yes, it is. So I know it's kind of messy, but it's two zero point zero zero. Okay. The next problem: three meters equal to how many inches? Well, we could use the old relationship of one inch equal to two point five four centimeter. But it's a little bit messy because you have your relationship in centimeter, not necessarily in meters. So you could choose, you can do one of two things. You can say, okay, I'm going to use this relationship, but first I got to change this meter to centimeters. Well, three meters times one meter over a hundred centimeter. 
because remember the relationship between meters and centimeter is such that one hundred cm is equal to one meter. You guys remember that? So we start with what we have, which is three meters, and you're going to put the meter on the bottom so it can cancel out, and the one hundredths on top. So now you have 300 centimeter, right? But we're not done yet. We want the answer in inches. So the 300 centimeters, you're going to multiply that by another ratio of 1. There you go. And that will be over 2.54 centimeter. Why not put centimeter in the bottom? Because it's to cancel out with the centimeter on top. Remember, it's going to be understood as 300 centimeter over 1. So that's on top, that's on the bottom. And then what's on top of will be 1 inch. Okay, 1 inch will go here because this is on the bottom. 1 inch. And you crank this out on a calculator and it should be about 100 and something. 118.11 inch. Okay, so that's how you do that problem. And the last problem is this one. Now this is a little bit tricky because what you're going to have to do is, uh, actually before we move on, let's go back to the last problem. There's another way of solving this problem, and that is to use the other relationships. We're going to use this relationship. One meter is equal to 39.37 inches. Okay. One meter, 39.37 inches. This is much more straightforward in that you start with what you have, 3 meters, that's understood to be over 1, multiplied by a ratio of 1, but what's on the bottom? Meter will have to be in the bottom to cancel it out. How many meter? 1 meter. What's on top? 39.37 inches. And then you do the calculation, it should come out to be around 118.11. Okay? That's another way of doing this problem. Okay. Let's go to the last problem. Last problem, we can use the same relationship. One meter is equal to 39.37 inches. But first, we've got to convert this to all in inches. Remember, there are 12 inches in one feet, one foot, right? So, with six foot person, that's understood to be over one, we're going to multiply by a ratio of one. What's on the bottom? The one foot is on the bottom. What's on top? Twelve inches. And this would be equal to about 72 inches. But the person is 6 foot 1. Okay, so we're going to have to add on one more. And that would make it 73 inches altogether. So now we have is in inches, and we can use this equation now without any problem. So I'm going to bring this back up here. 73 inch, it's assumed to be over 1, multiply by a ratio of this over this. What's on the bottom? Well, inches should be in the bottom. Okay, so 73 
on top an inch, which means 39.37 inch on the bottom. And meter will have to be on top. And then you plug that into a calculator, you should get the answer that was posted earlier, which was, I don't remember, but it should be 1.85 meters. Oops. This should be 1.85 meters. Which is, yeah, is about correct. Okay, so the answer is 1.85 meters. So I hope this makes sense.